Hello, it's Karen here, and today we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're going to take a step-by-step -step look at how to make use of knowledge in order to make something that's called trash or weak in the PvP meta shine. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll probably know I like to advocate keeping your mind open instead of parroting what other people say without sufficient proof. I firmly believe in making knowledge work for you instead of against you. And today, we're going to be taking a look at hammers. So how exactly do we make a build for hammers? The first thing that pops into most experienced players' mind is probably power stancing, which is basically dual wielding the same type of weapon. Power stancing is strong in Elden Ring in general, especially for weapons that have movesets that land together, like the straight sword's power stance jump attack. However, the hammer's power stance jumping attack has a much longer recovery than the straight sword's. Furthermore, the only other sort of usable power stance attack is the crouching attack, which honestly isn't that great either because of the range. Therefore, this is not the path I chose for my level 125 build. Instead, I went for this. If you want to try this out at 150, add another 18 points into strength and you can make use of other 7 points however you wish, such as adding some mind for more weapon art spams before having to flask or more endurance so you can hold another weapon instead of a dagger. Let me talk through this build step by step. Let's start with the armor. I'm running the Banished Knights for fashion, but with the Bull Gold Talisman you can push over 93 poise, which allows you to tank through some of the Halberds or Reaper's attacks. Not a necessity, but it does help with trading with some of the faster halberds. Next, I make builds work without hard swapping to make my builds accessible to the general public. The dagger is simply there for the weapon art, Flame of Red Mains. It is using Heavy Infusion because with this stat spread, Heavy Infusion will give you more damage on the weapon art, since we're not going to be using the dagger for anything else, unlike in PvE where a Fire Misery Cord has more raw attack to break through the defense barrier on a critical strike. The build utilizes only two Ashes of War and no spells, therefore I didn't find the need for more mine investment. Anyway, Storm Stomp is a true combo into your Hammer Light attack if the enemy has 100 poise or less. It also grants 300 Hyper Armor and has Lingering Hitbox, making it a strong Ash of War at melee distance. While the Flame of Red Mains isn't exactly a powerful Ash of War in PvP because of its slow cast, it does have decent range and damage if it does land. What it's really good at is forcing a roll because of its damage and incredible stagger. The main point is making your opponents wary of a ranged option even when you're not next to them, giving them less ease of swapping gear or disengagement. Furthermore, it also punishes people who want to trade into this attack. The build is very high on endurance because we're aiming for the Halic Tree Quest Great Shield, which, ignoring Fingerprint Shield, is the shield with the highest guard boost that you can have no skill on. The Fingerprint is far too heavy for our purpose unless you use lighter armor, which you definitely can do. But the thing is, we won't always be guarding, and we aren't trying to abuse shield pokes. The shield is simply a tool in the arsenal for you to make use of, and the Halic Tree Shield just looks better. Okay, so how exactly are we going to utilize the shield that pretty much locks us into strength investment? And why the hammer weapon class? And more specifically, why the regular hammer? Even if we ignore shield pokes, why don't we just run the shield with something more meta in PvP, like the Banished Knight's Halberd, Broadsword, Morning Star, or Stone Club on a strength build? First, let's take a look at hammer length. This is the longest infusible hammer. On a heavy infusion, it also has the second highest attack. Compared to the other weapon classes I just pointed out, this is what we get. Higher AR than the sword, but lower than the halberd. Pretty much expected. Now we also take a look at their frame data. We see that the stone club's unique light attack chain makes the first light attack 2 frames slower. The hammer is only 1 frame slower than the sword, while being 2 frames faster than the halberd too. This unique placement allows it more damage than a straight sword, while only being slightly slower. We want this fast speed as it's very useful for smacking your enemies while staying at close range. Because you're faster, you have the initiative to trade attacks, as long as you are in range, and the shield is exactly what's going to allow you to be very aggressive in getting in range. As for the Morning Star, it does give us the Pierce attack moveset. However, the crouching attack is quite short, 
and loses out in pokes against just about any other piercing weapon. We're really just gaining the additional moveset of running heavy attack. But this comes at a price, which is that the Morning Star is much shorter than the hammer, making you miss much more when you do light attacks after your Storm Stomp. The bleed itself also doesn't serve much of a purpose on the heavy infusion. One extra thing worth a note is the hammer's light running attack kind of sucks, which is also where the shield comes in, as doing the regular light attack is better. The shield allows you to walk forward while swinging. If you are running though, you can let go of your run button to do a regular light attack after the run up, which is faster than the running light attack. Next, if we look at the poise damage, we see that the halberd punishes the 61 poise breakpoint with one hit, one stagger, but the hammer can't. Poking halberds are only 2 frames slower and still has more AR. Why don't we run that instead? Well, yeah we can. But the thing is, the hammers have a much faster card counter. Yes, card counter. You heard that right. Typically, card counters don't really land because of how obvious they are and their slow speed. But the hammer's card counter is fast enough that it becomes a mix-up. This thing also deals 360 poise damage, so it staggers just about anyone unless they have hyper armor from their attack. So all of this puts hammer at a unique place that is somewhat comparable to meta weapons. I'm not saying it's extremely good or anything. In fact, as a weapon class, it's definitely weaker than meta ones. You can easily straight up lose matchups like power stance thrusting swords. It wouldn't be a bad idea to hard swap into something else for poor matchups. But as long as you make use of your stamina well and push aggressively, you can actually perform pretty decently with this build. I would also say this build works better in smaller arenas, like the location at Thornvale where ERPVP Discord uses for tournaments. So I'm going to be doing a few matches with someone who plays on the ladder and is in my Discord. I'll do some duels here and then some at academies. I think the only thing you must change for this build for ERPVP ladder is swapping Great Shield Talisman for the Green Turtle, but I doubt anyone will actually go ahead and play this on ladder. Plus, the Great Shield charm allows people not used to managing stamina a bit more leeway for mistakes, so I'm going to be showcasing it with a Great Shield Talisman. If you want to support my work, consider buying my newly published fantasy novel, The House of Hounds. It's a carefully crafted story packed with mystery, adventure, and magic. Let's see if he's gonna roll through this. We might be able to get a storm stop combo. Oh, I thought I dodged that. Oops. Okay, we can actually block that too, but we'll trade here. Not the best trade, honestly. Here, we're gonna play a bit smarter. The next one's gonna be a frost, so we can use the phantom thing to stay in range. Remember, even if you have the shield, um, dodging most of the time is still better, so especially because Scorpion is running a uh, cold weapon, so there's magic damage to his attacks too. We're just gonna do a regular attacks, get him, and keep on going with our 14 frames. Okay, let's see if we can finish this off with the stomp. Okay, just careful, and we can win this. A stomp. Oh. oh. That was a bit too far, so we couldn't get him with the follow-up. We'll try, uh, we can actually end this with a stomp, I think, or another light attack. Mm, we might even be able to do a guard counter. Okay, never mind, I finished it with a stomp. I think Scorpion's around rank 130 for the PvP ladder on PC, so he's, um... So he's better than the average Mac player you're going to meet, and this should be a pretty decent test. Since we can't do anything to him while he's on the ground anyway, we'll just do our bolus and our turn to frostpot him. Honestly, frostpot is really powerful. Okay, stomp into two trades that was worth. Attack another stomp. Okay, maybe I should have just done a light attack there to catch him instead. Okay, see the phantom hit really is like annoying as heck. We'll try red mains here. That was a good trade for 734 damage, honestly. Um, we'll tr do our regular attacks. Okay, he was smart enough to do the combo instead. Um, that was a positive trade for him. We'll try to get him with the frost. We might be able to win if we just get another stomp in or a light attack. We'll try- oh, oops, that was my miss input. Okay, a stomp maybe. 
and uh, never mind. Okay, maybe I should just guard counter here, honestly. But he already played me more than a few times. Oh, that was a nice play. And UGS Poise Boy. This might be trouble. Okay, we'll try. Okay, actually, if he isn't running a elemental UGS, we might be okay by just guarding like this and trading. Okay, wow, well, he's just swinging. As I said, dodge is still better. Um, guard is just a tool to help you stay in place, and that was a poor roll on his side, and flames caught him because of his huge width. Okay, we can just guard that. Oh, stop. Didn't expect that. It's fine. We're still ahead a bit on HP, as long as he doesn't really get a great counter hidden, we might be okay just guarding and then attacking. Ouch. UGS OP crouch poke. And the stomp, but we guarded it and stomp ourselves. Oh man. I didn't realize my health was that low, but okay, I probably won with like 1 HP. Just one singular great spear. Okay. Let's try red mains first. Okay, you must roll red mains or you get staggered. Um, if jumps, we can guard counter because the recovery is too slow, so we can guard counter it there. Okay, pikes is okay. We're ahead on HP, and great shield hammer is actually pretty good when we're ahead on HP. Oh, I was actually expecting a roll there so I can swap back to hammer, but. As I said, you must roll red mains or else, um, yeah, you're gonna die. A twin blade and a shield, that is a very weird combination. Uh, oh, actually no, that's a, the shield that gives you passive, so he's just gonna two-hand his twin blades. Okay, we'll try red mains. Oh, he jumped over that. Nice jump there, buddy. Okay, see, he's not doing four. Yeah, he's not doing four. Okay, that was stupid of me. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. We'll just play better. Let's try some red main spam first. There you see, because sometimes when you roll through, you won't expect another red mains. Yeah, he HP potted. Okay. Okay, you know what? Whatever. Oh well, I'll just try my best. I don't think I can win if he has 14 pots. But we'll just, you know, give it a go. Maybe if I had, hadn't taken the bleed, I would have done better, but oh well, we can start now. Okay, dodge, we'll play more reactive and try to not let the blood um, proc on us. Okay, we'll dodge that. Honestly, this is not going to be a great trade for us because Twin Blades attacks pretty fast. And if he just chips us, we're going to... Look, he's trying to guard counter. Okay. It's not gonna work well for him. But yeah, Twin Blades attacks pretty fast, especially with status. So we're in a bit of trouble. We might need to do some red more. We might need to do some more red mains. Okay, let's try Stomp. Oh my god, that's the third one already. Well, I might as well just die at this point. Oh well. What's the point of playing if you're gonna keep potting? <laughs> Let's try to bait a bloodless. There we go. Dodged while um, he hits us. So we can reset the blood. Oh, that was my bad. Oh, he was a bit too close. Oh well, I didn't really want to play him anymore anyway. Four golds with Nagakiva. Not power stance, Katana. Okay, what is he gonna do? Oh, apply buffs. Okay, we'll wait. I'm gonna guess that's probably spinning slash. Did he just try to strafe that or something? Okay, well, this is okay, actually interesting. Okay, at least that's. Um, oh, I thought I guarded that. Yep, spinning slash. Oops, that was my back. I should have just held guard. Okay, we'll try here. Just a regular hit. We'll guard that. Guard counter. And yeah, we trade it. Perfect. Okay, that was a bit dangerous, but. I thought I could poise through the second hit, and it worked out well.
Oh. Is that black wing protection? Well, uh, we're on heavy hammer, so this isn't looking too great. <laughs> we'll try red mains first then. Once again, let them think we're um, using red mains. Uh, mm, the death dagger is going to be kind of annoying to deal with, honestly. And if he just keeps running... The mag is honestly too big. If he just keeps running and spamming that, honestly, I don't really want to play this guy, even if he's using dual daggers. Okay, let's see if I can get the punish. Nope. Okay, we'll just swing. Ah, uh, dodge. Yeah, I will still get hit. I hit the phantom thing. Okay, red mains. He's, he's just gonna run. You know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna go YOLO in. Go in, trade! Ah, oh, that was too slow. If I had done faster, okay, whatever, mutual death. Yeah, better than playing this thing. Hey. Halberd should, this should be a pretty good look at um, some more meta setups. Yep, Halberd with Flame and Drake, a really strong combo. Okay, Storm Storm, two hits, nope, one, attack again. Okay, this is okay, this is fine, we can just walk that and attack with our faster light attack. And we can guard that too, even if it's a bit of chip from the fire, we're okay. You see, um, great shields are really powerful. We'll just do our light attacks because that's our greatest part. And we'll just keep the pressure up and stick close to him. Another halberd, um, a night cavalry. He's gonna be out of range. Yep, he, if he had charged forward a bit more. Another flaming strike, huh? Okay, well, there we go. Storm Storm combo. He doesn't. Okay, he's gonna roll away after we stomp. Yep. Oh, I should have walked for one more step. Okay, keep, up, keep the pressure on and just keep chasing him. He can't do much if we just put up our guard and we'll swing. We can just react to him swing. Just keep the pressure up and stick close to him. A very oonga boonga build. There we go. Easy win. Once again, remember the running attack is bad. So you want to run up and then let go of your run button and do the regular light attack like that. Oh, that's a great sword. That's health hints, I believe. Okay, we do with two red mains, and he gets hit by it. Of course he does. People are too used to strafing. Stomp and combo. Oh, that didn't catch. Okay, that was my bad. Probably a slow input. Okay, gotta focus. Ah, he rolled out of range. It's fine, it's a great sword. He doesn't have to poke. Walk one and attack. There we go. Just attack again. We're fine. And we trade with the red main. Card free. I was gonna end with this, but okay. Yeah, let's see if he puts up a good fight. I kind of doubt it, but okay. Let's go, bro. Let's go. He just ran into red mains. Can we just red mains him to death like the real Godfrey? <laughs> oh, poor guy. I even got the backstab. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> okay, we, we need another match for sure. This one doesn't cut it as the last one. Perry King. Okay, let's see if he actually gets his parry off. Hey! And Halbert. Okay, it's fine. Do red mains once again the spacing favors us you just need to know the spacing of your attacks to properly use your ashes of wars we'll put up the pressure and stomp him in so he can parry us and 
we can actually try to mix things up with our heavy attack too, which we don't usually do because, you know, our heavy attack like that is quite slow. But I guess he doesn't really know how to parry, he's just spamming it. So we can try a card counter. Okay, he's disengaging, so we'll do... Oh, oops, I didn't dodge the thunderbolts. Stomp and attack. Let's, I can actually we can finish this with. Let's see if we can do a backstab. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Okay, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Please help me by buying my book, and see you next time.